striving in the storm. And I want to, the text for this message is taken from the book of Judges. Judges chapter 16 from verse 27, actually 27, just three verses, 27 to 30. Now the temple was full of men and women. All the laws of the Philistines were there. About 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. O oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple. And he braced himself against them, one on the right and the other on the left. Then Samson said, Lord, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord's, and all the people who were in it So the death that he killed at the so the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. Another version of the Bible say that, uh, so that now the temple was full of men and women. And then this is what he said. And... 3,000 men and women were on the roof. Clarity. It was not 3,000 that died at the death of Samson. It was 3,000 that were on the roof in addition to the full capacity inside the temple. But they all died. Now, if something would take 3,000 standing on the roof, Maybe it's 4,000, maybe it's 7,000 that, that fill the inside of the temple. You do not build a temple just for people to stand on the roof. They overflow to the rooftop because it's been filled inside. Do you, so is, is that making sense? And, and so this is it. Now, this is uh, at, at the title of this message is Thriving in the Storm. And we know what storm represent. Storms are sudden emergence of destructive wind, ripping and tearing. It comes when we are we least expect it, and thank God for science that we can be forewarned that it's going to happen around here. It's going to be category this or that. When it comes, it's going to be devastating. So you have a little knowledge. You've already been warned, and some people start to board the building and board the windows from shattering. And when it, when it comes, even though you seem to be prepared, it still creates havoc. Uproot the, the ceiling, can, the, the rooftop. Can you be so prepared and start to renail the roof? Uproot the rooftop that will floor a whole building and devastate the whole community. Storm. When it comes, it comes. And when you're going through storm, you may end up being able to give the story if you don't get destroyed, wiped away through with the storm. Storm. So, but in the storm, how can you thrive? Let's borrow the, 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 the character of the eagle. How can eagle soar? What, is, what does it mean to soar in a storm? The eagle 
see the opportunity of this dangerous appearance, he sees it as a welcome opportunity to soar. And when, what does it mean to soar? When, you are, you, when the bird starts start flapping its wing and just stay and the force of the storm just carry it like that and it's just when the plane is swirling, it's going up without engine power. You just stay and it just... It takes opportunity, advantage of a destructive thing to shoot to the next level. That is how it's going to be for you. That is how it's going to be for me, thriving in the storm of life. So, it's not the adversity itself. That is the craziest bad thing that happens to man. It is your reaction to adversity. Not the adversity itself. That determines how your life story will develop. This is, this is a quote by, from Data Uthdorf. Uth, Uth it is your response. Samson was able to cast a riddle. And he said, if the Philistines can decode it, if they can decipher it, he said, out of the killer came something sweet. Whew. The young lion that appeared on the, on, to him on his way, and he, the, with the intention of ripping him up and having him for dinner, the power of the Lord descended upon him, and he ripped the lion in two, and on his way back, right in the carcass of the, the lion, hive, uh, beehives already produced honey, and he tasted it. And he took some to his spirit. That which is said to destroy you. It's a door. To your advancement. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you will thrive in the storm of life. And you will, you will you succeed. Even in the place of destruction. Intended destruction. In the name of Jesus. And you will come to know. It's not by might. Never by power. It's by the spirit. Of the Lord. So, what was Samson's call to avenge, to rescue the Israelites from the domination of the Philistines? And he stumbled, he fumbled, the call of God upon once is without repentance. And then he, 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 dug, himself, he dug his own pit. Got dissuaded, taken apart, taken away. And at a point, he was broken, wrecked. Storm hit him in a way, devastating that he can never bounce back to what he used to be before. It, it, has, it comes with a broken spirit, broken body, eyes gushed out, every ear scraped, the source of power tampered with, and he was nothing. They now they brought him in to be ridiculed, let him dance and amuse us. The Lord has at the, at eventually destroyed our enemies before our eyes. Bring him, strip him naked, flog him, two sheep pushing around, ridicule him. He's broken by every definition of brokenness. But as a call and as an assignment. <laughs> this is what he did. I will take it from 30, I'll walk my way back to 10, 27. And so, verse 30 say of Judges 16, verse 30. Then, this, then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might. And the temple fell on the Lord's. And all the people who were in it, so the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. Did he accomplish his task? All the laws of the Philistines were there and they all perished in one day. And in one day, he didn't kill 3,000. 3,000 were all standing on the roof. And then the 7,000 filled this, the temple. And he killed more than he ever killed. If you remember, you know, he killed 1,000 with the, with, with the, bow, with the jawbone of a donkey. And when they, they, he, he gave a riddle and he couldn't win the riddle because he, he leaked his own secret. 
and he had to bring so much garment, he went in and killed so many with about a thousand again. So he has killed thousand, thousand, thousand at different locations at a time. But if they say he killed more at his death than he did in his life, it would not talk, we'll be talking close to about seven, eight thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand. Once day in his brokenness, wrecked body, crushed, but not abandoned. He accomplished his purpose. He thrived and he performed and he was able to complete the task. So, if that was, okay, now let me go to 29. I'll say I'm walking my way back. And something took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple and braced himself against them on one right and on the other on his left. That is the process. You can see the picture in your mind. What gave him confidence to know that that will happen? Now I'm going to go to 27 and 28. 27. No, 28. Then Samson called on the Lord, saying, You cannot you see who gave Samson the power in the first place. And when everything seems over with for you, where, where do you go to to get the power again? To get the wisdom again? To get the te te technical know-how again? Because he's the one that gives wisdom to man. He said, there's a spirit in man and the breath of Almighty give understanding. If you don't have the divine understanding from God, sometimes you need the grace to be able to discern the heart of God, to know when to sit and when to move. In the heat of every tribulation, there is something in you that is not with, within you, that is from the Almighty, that will lead and guide you and direct you when you are going through the storm and take you to a place. So refuse to believe so much in yourself, but lay, connect. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy hand. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Direction comes from God. If you need a breakthrough and you want to sure, you need to be able to listen, take a break, and sit, and be able to receive the instruction and move and plunge. Do not go by what people say is the way or not the way. Go by what you know. Within you, he knows. He said, who can know the heart of God except the spirit of God in him? We have the spirit of God to be able to know the heart of God. See, that is how you go. That's how you go. That's how you go. And so, he already went to the Lord. It is him connecting back to God that gave him confidence to launch. As like many of us, we will say that is the end of the road. Something that is, you are over. You can't see. Your ear has been scraped. You are, you, your wife killed. You are not being ridiculed. Oh, the overall champion is now down. And, and he said, give me power again. This one time, oh God, will you go to God even in the devastation that you are going through and let him again take you step by step. You have, he has brought you this far. And you, you are here now. Can you go to him first? That is the first place. You want to soar, you want to thrive. Go back to the beginning. And reconnect with God. He showed you how to become. He can take you another part to how you should be. Now these are the, some principles that I promise I'm going to be sharing with you. On how to thrive in the storm. Every challenge we successfully conquer serves to strengthen not only our will, but our confidence. And therefore, our ability to continue in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Sikataria soto bushetia. This is a... When I, when I was taught in the course of the, uh, the preparation, I came... Against, I came in, I, I stumbled into this uh, quote. Oh, how, how so relevant to what we're going through. He said, when faced with a radical crisis, when the old way of being in the world, of interacting with each other and with the realm of nature doesn't work anymore, when survivor is threatened by seemingly insurmountable problems, an individual life, form, 
or a species will either die or become extinct or rise above the limitation of its condition through an evolutionary leap. When things like we are facing today in the world all over, when, 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 when we are faced with that, and this is by Eckhart Tolle in his book, A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. If you know, if you want, let me give it to you. Eckhart, E-C-K-H-A-R-T, Tolle, T-O-L-L-E, A New Earth. Awakening to your life's purpose. When faced with a radical crisis, when the old way of being in the world, of interacting with one another and with the realm of nature doesn't work anymore. When survival is threatened by seemingly insurmountable problems, an individual life or form or a species will either die or become extinct or rise above the limitation of its condition through an evolutionary. I'm saying that, how can you thrive in the storm? How can you swear in the storm? How can you borrow the character of an eagle and see what is said to destroy you and use it to be something that will advance you? How can you, unless you first go to God? How can you, unless you refuse to quit? How can you, unless you fail to carry baggage? That Do you see, let me say this. Now they said that uh, the, 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 black, the black race has been so disproportionately affected by this coronavirus. You know why? I don't want to blame everything on diet and existing condition. But it's been proven that the, 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 the composition of our very uh, uh, elements... Always show, when you go to the doctor, you always have low vitamin D level. And vitamin D level, apart from its anti-inflammatory, it works with the respiratory system. And so when the res respiratory system is, uh, is, this, it, is, is not at equilibrium, and when you hit with this thing, it goes to the respiratory. A lot of times. I dare you now to go to your doctor and say that you do bl blood work, you want to know your vitamin D level. I've done, it has happened to me a couple of times, and the doctor will say, your vitamin D level is low. They will give me 50,000 IU, whatever they call it, once a week for like eight weeks. And then you go back again. I say, now, a couple of times, it was, they will say it's low, and after two years, it's low. What is happening? And when your vitamin D level is low and you get hit by this, thing, some people can bounce back and some people may not be able to come back. The difference might be that part, along with healthy dieting and good health. And this too may come by, you see, your next level will come by revelation or by tribulation. I don't need to go through coronavirus effect and the near-death experience to know that, okay, now, Right now, you start to load yourself up with, let me just, uh, I'm not a doctor, but just start to load yourself up with lemon and garlic and ginger. Take it every day and check your vitamin D level. And when it comes, you are standing because you've already done yours. Leave the rest for God. Observe all the precautionary procedures, the social distances, the sanitizer and all that, but then continue to expect the, the healer is God. The protector is God. So, one major thing you want to watch in working and striving, let go of every problem. Let go of the pain. Let go of unforgiveness. It is going to add unnecessary weight to you. The ego cannot swerve when they have weight down. You cannot, you cannot even sprint, even jog, when you have like 60 pounds of short put tied to one leg, tied to the other. It will slow you down. That is what unforgiveness will do for you. It slows you down. It hinders you from jumping. That is why it says, let lay aside every weight that prevent us from running the race. So you can't fly, you can't sprint, you can't jump, you can't leap, you can't soar when you have weight of unforgiveness pulling you down every time you want to work on. Will you just let the go, go of it 
And when you have problem letting go, go on your knees and call God because they have done, you have afflicted you with so much pain. You can't even think about it. But go to God and cry before God and let him take it off and lift the weight off you and lift the burden of you so you can strive without any animosity against no man. You need that. You need that. You cannot hold to unforgiveness and expect to swear. You cannot hold grudge against anyone. It constitutes unnecessary weight and it will slow you down. It says so you get to be light to soar. Hebrews 12.1. That's, that's the first one you want to first check and make sure you are correct before him. Hey, see the second one I want to talk here. It's two in one. Job chapter 42. I want to take from verse 9 to 12. So, Eliphaz, the, the Terminite, and Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namathite, went and did as the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job. And the Lord restores, restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. I say that again. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, 11. Then all, the, all his brothers and all his sisters... And all those who had been his acquaintances before came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Twelve. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. He had 14 hours. Okay. The Lord restored for Job after he prayed for his advers ad adversaries. You cannot do without forgiving. The doors cannot open for you until you help open somebody's door. Simple. So when he did that, so don't hold on to you are doing yourself more than them. Now will you say that when Job lost everything, you think he has any money saved somewhere? I'll tell you, he had nothing. Everything he had, if there is a remnant of the old, it will pollute the new. Because the old was to be crushed completely from his children how many of his children was spared? None. How many of his donkeys and horses and everything, houses, everything, and himself, grander? He was like a lizard with pain, affliction, like there for days. That was all that he had. Broken body. Nothing. Not a sight to even be, to, to, to even, to, 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 to worthy of emulation. How did he start though? How did he bounce back? The Lord restored. The Lord just didn't pour it all down from heaven. He, they, he, they, 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 they gave him start up capital. His friends, his former acquaintances, and his brothers and his sister, they came and ate with him. And they gave him, each gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. He started with the very little. He took that as a startup capital. And with God breathing in favor of him, he built it up again. You have nothing now. Such day. You've lost your job. You are grieving. Things are so, 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 so devastating. You can't work so you can't make money. Don't neglect that little gift that your brothers and sisters and your relatives are giving to you. Take that very little. Hey, it's a humble beginning. 
just yourself up. Now, we, 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 we give him food every week, right? We need volunteers, right? The ones we have, is they, we, we, overlay, we overwork them. Even myself. We get home and we start to apply all this rub and all this healing pad. And we take 800 milligrams of ibuprofen so to stretch the bones by the morning. But you know what? There are some people who receive a, an, if, a, an email from the Department of Social Services, PG, and they said that they have an organization that is giving people, that is paying $14, $15 for, 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 uh, per hour to, so, to people to come and volunteer for non-profit for free. And we say, come on, talk to them. They send us six people last Thursday. Government is paying them $14 an hour, and it's free to us. But these are people that if you have, and they said that you can go and register, and they will be calling you for jobs. Oh, this place, this, there's non-profit work here, goes to volunteer. That's not, start from somewhere. You've lost your job, you can't even drive Uber, you can't drive Lyft, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a solid death sentence. You don't know who are coming in and, and out of your car, and you wind up, and you are breathing the same air, you're gone. So they, they, they're not working now. But can you come volunteer in a more peaceful environment and make $40 an hour and let that be a start of capital for you to launch back because God is there still in the humble beginning. You're going to strive in the name of Jesus Christ. They told me that there's a lady that is about to finish her, complete her PhD. She's one of those volunteering too. She, they want to bring her next week. So if PhD are coming to volunteer for $14, PhD that I believe should be making 120 per hour, and they want to, don't, don't, don't be ashamed of humble beginning. If you're going to strive, you do not look at what your, 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 don't look at your expectation. Grab what you have and take that little trash and let it become gold. You're going to strive. You are called to, to thrive in the name of Jesus Christ. So don't ever be afraid to start again. After you forgive, don't be afraid to start again. But for no one thing, God is not moved by your pain as he is moved by your pursuit. Even though he slay me, yet will I say trust him. You continue to call unto him. You have him as the, source, the very beginning of your bedrock of your faith and continue to push through in that. In the name of Jesus. Sir. When, for the, when David was tired crying, God didn't answer him because he was crying. He was tired. He had no strength to pray and to, to cry anymore. He said, come here, Beatrice. Let's hear what God says. When you lean to him, he comes back to you. It's not by power. It's not by mind. He's seeking your satire. He started with the little capital. Do not be ashamed of humble beginning. You know what storm is supposed to create? Destruction. Devastation. But you know what God will help you to convert it to? It is in the quote by Ken, Ken, Kenji Miyazawa, Miyazawa. We must embrace pain and burn it as fuel for the journey. They're coming to afflict you. And the Lord is giving you grace to convert it. It's helping you not to take offense. It's helping you not to, 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 take, to, to hold grudges. And then as they are hit, sending it your way to, te to tear you down, the Lord is converting it to fuel for you to launch to the next level. So the more they are coming against you, the higher you continue to go. Refuse the, the temptation of discouragement. That's another point. Everything you want to, you know to do, do, but refuse to buy the bait of discouragement. Become Nehemiah. Turn deaf ear. Tune down their ag aggressiveness. You have your Tambala, Sambala and Tobiah in your life that will mock you and ridicule you and make jest of what the Lord has put in your hand. You don't need to look at it. Turn it down. Disregard them. Resist any temptation to, di to be discouraged. And you know what? You are swearing high in the name of Jesus. <laughs> don't, don't, don't let it even sit. Now we are going through hard time in America. I know the time is tough in America. That's a fact. Even a more disturbing situation now 
It's an article I read in the Washington Post on May, May the 4th. And it says that coronavirus is causing historic rise in national health crisis. Anxiety and depression are rising. That shows the extent of the hurt and pain and tough time that we're going through. Given that, given it as it, given that as, it, as it is, as it may, there are some that are going through harder times. There are some that are going through tougher times. How tough it is here. A lady called us and said that, can I, can I come for food today, which was a Wednesday? I said, no, we give food every Friday, and we give food to particular people every other Friday. So you come next Friday and say, okay, thank you, sir. I just have to see how to tell my children they have to wait till Friday to eat. And it was like on the evening of Wednesday. I said, call me tomorrow. She called it on Thursday. I said, come down. And I gave her food. I've never seen somebody demonstrate such gratefulness, that great, great gratitude. She said, thank you. Thank I was saying, is it more than food? Where are we going? A man came and he said, we don't have he said, we, I, I have four children, and I lost my job. He was driving a new model, one of the latest model uh, Mercedes car, four-door sedan, almost like $90,000 worth. He lost his job. That's normal. You see, it's only three paycheck between you and poverty, regardless of what you have. He said, it's just, I, I have four children, man, and, and, and my number is like so many th uh, thousand on the queue for, 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 for non uh, unemployment uh, benefit. He said, I don't know what to do. I said, give him double. When men start to talk like that, you know that it's tough. But as tough as it is here, it's tougher for some people. After all, you got 1,200 as single and 2,400 as, as a couple. It, it's not much of anything, but it can go up the way to a month's supply, right? There are some countries that don't have nothing. And so why I'm saying this is that Job's, Job's key to restore, restoration was him praying for his friends and those that mocked him. You have $100. You need $200 to, to, to invest in a project. Somebody is hungry and need only $10. You have $100. Will you let your $10 be the key to that man's restoration and wait for God to restore you to 200 It's a principle. It's hard for you. It's tough for you. Look at those people that they are going through harder and tougher situations. I will tell you, and get ready to bring the picture of the, one in the, the Philistines. This pastor called us. We've had a relationship with them off and on for about five years. And he just he sent an email, and he was begging for how much? $250. He had 11 churches under him. And he said that, can we please help? They are under shutdown, and they cannot find, go to work, and their, their, church, their, their members are starving. They are suffering. He said, can you please send us $250 so we can feed? You know what? I called... Uh, uh, I called Jade, and I was, tell, I was going to tell her to send 250 from the church account. I had it clearly. He said, send it for your pocket. I said, okay. A day before that day, somebody, and my God's been present here today, just walked in and gave me an envelope. And I look at it, 150. I said, oh, okay. When I, the next day, God had need for that money. When I had that, I put another hundred from my pocket and I did cash up the date and she, she, she passed, she sent it to them. A week afterward, they sent me an email 
with a picture of how far that 250 went. Look at it. And I said, I, 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 just, I, I was just broken. Like, what? 250. This many people. They sat down on, on, a, on, on, on chairs with so, with, 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 while still observing the social distancing. And they all had the marks already set. Waiting for manners to fall in the name of $250. No wonder we have seen the hand of God in, the, on, on, on this ministry. We have seen supernatural. A bakery called us and said, do you guys take donations? I said, yes, we do. They said, well, come take two pallets of artisan bread. Two pallets. We went with just loaded pallets. This coming Friday, we're going to be giving diapers to women that do not see women. All these things are coming to us from right, left, and center. Every time for the last two Fridays now, when we, when we set up, people just come and give us donations. One gave us donation of, uh, of chips in boxes. This last one, they brought us a whole donation of sanitary uh, uh, something uh, in, 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 in plastic bags in a box. If you don't do for those that are less privileged, you are not positioned to thrive. You got to look down and from those people that you are better off to help to lift them up so that he who can be lifted up. You are born to thrive. <laughs> really, this is a situation. And after coronavirus will be pandemic, when this is over, it will give birth to another level of need. And the Lord in his wisdom, giving you the ability to be able to discern, will start to work with you and position you. That which is said to destroy you, you will, it will position you. See, what happens when the ray of light is set to blind you? But the Lord gives you a mirror to be able to tilt it. At the heat back, it goes away. It will not, it's not supposed to crush you. It's not supposed to destroy you. It's supposed to strengthen you, to take you to another level. You will use the pain and it will burn as fuel to charge you up to the next level. Now, what they are doing to you to want to destroy you, you will be like Joseph and say to them, oh, don't you know that you meant it for evil? Oh, they have said, I don't care how this thing, coronavirus came, the end of it will make you better. Do you know that stock market do not react like the condition of the economy? When the economy is falling, stock do not necessarily fall because it's based on expectation. They start to invest now. When the economy is in down, they start to invest. Stocks start to rise because, you know what? It's, they're speculating a bouncing back of the economy, and they start to set up. So, it, so, so, so in, your, in your mental framework, don't flow by what you see. Flow by the things you know. Flow by the direction you are receiving. Flow by the instruction that has been laid down to you. And start to set yourself. Start to position yourself. It's going to be a turnaround for you. If you are going to be more than what you used to be, at the end of it all, you will continue to see God. You will continue to manifest the glory of God. And people will wonder. I cannot tell you how much God has shown favor and mercy to us. I will say this is what we did exactly. This is the particular thing we did, not just the Philistine. It's just an act of compassion we extended over there. But when we were here and they just took, they came in and just, they, did you, do you have the, 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 the thing for the, for, the, for, the, for the news yet? No, they don't. Let's, let, let's just put, it, put, it, put that on. And this was just last Friday. We didn't go there looking, see, wait, waiting for... We just continue to be faithful with what, where the Lord has set us. And we continue to do what he has laid on hard to do. And that is, is it on? Glory be to the name of the Lord. So do what is needful. Before you know, to, before you, know you start to do what is impossible. Start by doing something. And don't just start by doing something. Start by doing it now. You've lost it all. Turn to him. Take a step. Move by faith. You are soaring like an eagle. You are thriving in your storm. And nothing will be able to stop you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the Lord is good. I worship him. Yes. Yes. Let's show it. Let's see it. In the name of Jesus. He's good. He's faithful. He's all that we need. He's the only one that can give all that we want. 
we give him glory in the name of Jesus. And if you are here today and you have not even accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's no better time to do that than not just, just reflect. See what is happening to you. See how our world has come to become. The powerful are as weak as, uh, uh, as weakling. The wisest are as foolish as the word fool. Things has torn all over now. Life can never be the same no more. But in the midst of it all, you are born to thrive. And you will thrive. Believe him. Receive him. Accept him. It's not going to be without challenges. But it will walk you through the challenging moment. And bring you to a faithful, a sweet completion. You, don't, you cannot go and, to, and start and, and to make a new beginning. You start from where you are and make a brand new ending. Your ending will favor God. It will favor you. It will rain blessing to your life. And it will affect your generation yet unborn. In Jesus' mighty name. I, I'm congratulating you ahead of time. For your new you. For your new life. In Jesus' mighty name. Go and shine. You have the light of Christ in you. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.